All right, so today, here's a little bit of an update on the Starlink positioning. When I first got Starlink, I had it down on this platform here on the ground to see if it would work. Now, it detected minor obstructions, so which were probably this tree here. Um, it only detected obstructions about once every half hour to 45 minutes. That's what it was telling me anyway. Um, but still, uh, it didn't seem like it was the perfect spot, even though I thought there was plenty of open area here. Um, so what I did was I just mounted it on this pole. I didn't particularly want to put it on the house, just my preference. So I have it on this pole here. It's about four feet high and it just sits on the top and points perfectly. According to my last uh, stats, there's absolutely no obstructions. I'll show you pictures of that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the cord above ground, like a power line. I'm going to run it to my house. I haven't done that yet, but it's going to run to the top of the house and in a hole drilled in the siding. Uh, that way I don't have to deal with running the cord underground and having a conduit because this uh, power cord's not rated to be directly buried. So you need to have a conduit. You need to dig uh, I don't know what's underground right here. It is really close to my septic. That's my septic. So I don't really want to start digging around here. And I also don't want the cord running above, like on the ground or at a height that it would get in the way because this is a high traffic area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it probably six, seven feet high to almost my roof, run it down the siding and into the house. And that's about it for the physical setup. I'll go inside and show you the speed tests and every other statistic I have uh, for the last two weeks. All right, so what I'm gonna do today for an update is I'm gonna do another speed test for Starlink. I'm gonna use the same website I used last time for consistency, and we're gonna see how they compare. Um, as you can see, before this video started, uh, it automatically did one when I came on uh, the website. 489.9 megabytes a second, the upload at 13.7, the ping of 65.9, and a jitter of 4.11. So we'll just retest that while you're watching it again, just so that you can see uh, the whole process. Uh, my experience has been uh, that the speed has been a lot higher than it was before. I'm doing this in the middle of the day. That's important to know the timing. It's 1.30 in the afternoon. Um, so you can expect download speeds will be slower than they would be in the evening. That's just my experience. Um, I always find it's busier during the day, which means the download speed is slower, probably because all the businesses are running. As you can see though, the speed's picking up now. The evenings and weekends, it's much faster, but we have a few people in the house using the internet and we haven't had any problems at all, which is unbelievable considering what we were used to. Um, only one person being able to use the internet at a time and even then it's inconsistent So I'm going to run yet another test just to show you um, So consistently around 50 megabytes a second download Somewhere in the low teens for an upload the ping of 65 is wonderful. Uh, that's a very good ping for gaming uh, Well this time the download speed was a lot higher. So anyway, you saw the tests um, just waiting for it to finish here. Besides that, I'm gonna show you a few details from Starlink's app itself. So the good thing about Starlink's app, uh, which is how you're running your internet through the phone, is that it keeps some statistics itself. So because I put the satellite up a little higher, it says uh, that the visibility has been good. I have absolutely no obstructions whatsoever. It's about four feet off the ground. Uh, so it doesn't need to be mounted to your roof. It can go on the ground, though when I had it directly on the ground, I did have some obstructions. It was running fine for me with those obstructions. Uh, it was about once every 40 minutes or so, I think it warned me that there would be a problem. And uh, it was good, but I wanted it to be better. So this is what I'm at now. This is a network statistics uh, information thing. So as you can see, the uptime and outages. Um, you see the little blips? I honestly don't know what these little blips are because it could be maybe momentarily, but this is not noticeable. So I'm gaming, none of these little blips affect me. So this could be some type of network lag. It's really hard to say. 
Here you can see the latency. My minimum latency, 25 seconds, max is 59, uh, and then a medium number here. So that's an excellent latency. These numbers are lower than what the website says. Um, you can expect that their own app will give you the most favorable numbers, but even if you compare these to what we have on the website, the median of those numbers are still very good. Speed test here, I'm not gonna do this speed test. Um, but anyway, it looks like there's a, a 23 megabyte here and a one megabyte upload. Oh, it, okay, so there is an automatic speed test here. So as you can see, on the device it says 140 megabytes per second. The router's getting uh, 232. These numbers are way higher than the website was saying. Uh, so as I would expect, I wouldn't usually do an internal speed test. It seems a little biased to me, but that being said, the website that I did use for the speed test could be American. I'm Canadian, makes a really big difference, depending on where the speed test is pinging from. So this could, this might be more accurate. I can say that uh, when I download things, movies and such, I get a very fast speed, but I wouldn't be able to put it into numbers. All I can say is things like Netflix doesn't buffer. You can download a few, a full movie in about 10 minutes. Uh, it, it's been excellent that way. So anyway, that's the speed test. Um, I'm either going to put my previous speed test at the end of this, or maybe I did it side by side, who knows? Um, well, you probably do now. So you can compare how it's been. Um, my last two weeks with Starlink has been excellent. I have absolutely no complaints. The only complaints I would have are ones that you're gonna know about going in. So that's the price, has a very high starting price. Uh, to actually get Starlink and it has a very high monthly cost of 150. I just got my first bill. It appears that it's 150 no tax or 150 taxes in, which is a little better than 150 plus tax. Um, so that's a nice surprise bonus because uh, tax on 150 is a little bit. Um, it is the highest price internet I've ever seen, but if you are somebody like me and need something consistent with low latency, you can actually have that with Starlink and a satellite, if you can believe it. Uh, and I hope you do because uh, I've shown you now two tests uh, and the latency, and I'm telling you, it has been absolutely wonderful and true to its word. Um, it's fast and consistent, and there has been absolutely no downtime. I'm still technically in the beta, and uh, there is a warning that you can expect frequent outages. There are none, absolutely not one, in two weeks. Uh, so uh, it's wonderful. Uh, it's everything I expected and it's definitely worth the price. So anyway, that's it uh, for this update. Thanks. Um, so I'm just running another speed test here to show you uh, that important factor. Uh, I've ran a couple of tests now, as you can see in the upper right hand corner, latency is holding steady at 72 milliseconds. Come on now. For satellite, you can't complain about that. Anything under 100 for gaming is decent. It absolutely is. Uh, download speed is awesome. Upload speed at least half of download speed most of the time. Um, but, I mean, come on now. When you get above 10 megabytes a second, does it really matter anymore? Um, download speed is holding steady. Latency is pretty good. Jitter, I'm not super knowledge about jitter. I know jitter has something to do with latency. How, frequency, how frequently your latency spikes, I believe. Uh, so it looks like it's the middle of the line or slightly higher than average, but still, um, with good latency, that's fine. Uh, the test is done, so look, that's good internet, uh, good download, good upload, decent latency. Once again, we're getting 50 milliseconds is excellent gaming, 72, you're still good. You're still in the sweet spot below 100. So there it is. If you want a game with Starlink, go to it. Thank you.